A vibrant planet blessed by the light of the crystal. Amid azure seas, encompassing the westernmost of the three great continents, there lies a realm embraced by gods and forged by heroes. Her name, Aeorzea. The annals of Eorzean history chart the rise of a succession of great civilizations, each one enjoying an age of peace, the Astral Eras. To date, all have proven ephemeral. In the year 1572 of the sixth and most recent astral era, the Northern Empire of Gollumald amassed a great army at the heart of Eorzea, seeking dominion over all. Rising in desperate resistance, the forces of the Eorzean Alliance met their would-be conquerors in the field. Yet, even as the battle raged, the lesser moon Dalamo was plucked from the heavens through imperial machination. From its core emerged the elder primal Bahamut, who unleashed his fury upon the realm. The devastation brought Eorzea to its knees and the era to its end. have come and gone. The light of life still shines upon Eorzea. Man labors tirelessly to raise himself from the calamity's ruin. The realm is forever changed, a stranger to him once more. Yet heedless of what lies ahead, he shall press on. Spurred by the promise of peace and prosperity. Amid this period of great change, an adventurer arrives in Eorzea, one whose tale is yet unwritten. May he ever walk in the light of the crystal. I am the waves that bear. I am the winds that guide. I am the evening stars. I am the morning sky. I am born of the sea, and there shall I die. Thus reads the sailor's requiem, carved into yonder stone. Such words well describe the manner in which the citizens of Limsa Luminsa live their lives. It is both a litany against misfortune for those out on the waves, and a prayer that the souls of those who perish on land might find their way back to the sea. Ah, you are the adventurer I've seen around Summerford Farms. I thought myself on the trail of the kidnappers, but it would seem I have missed my mark. 
Or perhaps not. As I suspected, the etheric disturbance here is no natural occurrence. Nor is it a coincidence that the two of us should come here in search of those responsible for the disappearances, only to be attacked. But who stands to benefit from the keeping of this secret? Oh, such thoughts must wait. Let us attend to the task at hand, unpleasant though it be. So, this is the adventurer I've been reading about in the field reports. I am Melve Blufisfin, Admiral of Limsa Lominsa. On behalf of my people, I bid you thanks for the deeds you have done this day. A token of our gratitude. What worth is high regard without just reward after all? <laughs> Since you first set foot in our city, my good friend Badaron and Commodore Rayner have taken turns at regaling me with tales of your exploits. Safe to say, they left an impression. Join me at the coming banquet. A seat of honor at the celebratory feast is the least I can offer the woman who foiled the Sahagin. Oh! A seat at the feast! Oh, and don't be late. Your fellow guests will be eager to take the measure of their newest hero, and some do not take kindly to being kept waiting. Till then, may you walk in the light of the crystal. Brothers and sisters of the sea. Join me now in honoring this woman for her services to our great nation. May the navigator guide and protect her on her journey till sea swallows all. These pirates you encountered with the tattooed faces, they call themselves the Serpent Reavers. Their ranks are formed of cutthroats and madmen who have pledged themselves body and soul to the primal Leviathan. From what we have gathered, they sought to swell their numbers by spiriting away any soul unfortunate enough to cross their path. I need not tell you the depth of the animosity between us and the Sahagin. How any seaman worth his salt could devote himself to the Fishback's god is a question for a more temperate mind than mine. But, thanks to you, our citizens may once more go about their daily lives, safe in the knowledge that they will not be dragged into the darkness by those execrable curs. Such an extraordinary glow. This is one of the crystals of light. By the navigator. After our encounter with the Gubu, you had a vision, did you not, of a towering crystal? Yes. 
You bathed in her light. Yashtola's conclusion is clear, and I see no reason to doubt it. You are the vessel of a higher power. This being from your vision was the Mother Crystal. Your description matches what little we know of her. And if she has chosen you, then your deeds may yet shape the fate of nations as once did the deeds of the Warriors of Light. Know you the tale? Like you, they were not of these lands, yet they fought to protect us all against the corruption of the primals. When the Galian Empire began its conquest of the realm, these heroes joined the Grand Companies and helped reforge the Eorzean Alliance. And at the Battle of Cartano, they took the field beneath our banners to fight for everything we hold dear. It was on that day, in the midst of that hell, that we lost them. Every soul who survived that battle will never forget how it was to fight beside them. We are proud to call them our comrades. Yet whenever we try to shout their names, the sound dies in our throats. And whenever we strain to see their faces with our mind's eye, naught but their shadows appear to us, set against a blinding light. Ask any true Eorzean who knew them, and the story will be the same. It is for this reason that we call them the Warriors of Light. When I look upon you, I cannot help but be reminded of them. Keep that crystal safe. In time, I believe the Mother Crystal will make clear her reasons for bestowing it upon you. Heed well her words, adventurer, for it is Hydaelyn herself who speaks. Flames to the fore! Victory belongs to the bold! Show those Imperial whore sons what we're made of! The left flank buckles. Divert the Barracudas. Bid them hold that position, though it cost them their lives. The Yellow Serpents are in need of succor. Pray, send the White Wolves to their aid. The adventurers risk life and limb for our cause. We must not fail them. Is Artemis? No. It is nothing. Oh, oh, bloody hells! The barrier won't go down so easily! Eyes forward! We are being watched. Raging Bull, calling Bloodthorn. Bloodthorn, respond! Respond, damn you! Raging Bull, this is 
Use Mad Snake. Respond. Ryder, this is Raging Bull. What news? We're surrounded by a blaze. There is no way out. God preserve what is that thing? What's going on? Speak to me! God's damage! We cannot hold much longer! Mad Snake! Mad Snake! Answer me! Damn it! Damn it all to the seventh hell! What of the Barracudas? Can they not be reached? Sorry, Admiral. Shell's not working. What of our own? I cannot say, my lady. That monstrosity appears to be disrupting our communications. We must keep trying. Call till they respond. Yes, my lady. Admiral, General, we can do no more. We must give the order to withdraw. I will not forsake Louis Swa. General, please. Victory may belong to the bold, but there will be no victor this day. You know this to be true. Let us not sacrifice lives in vain. The adventurers fight bravely, but to no avail. Let them withdraw, and let us be the ones to stand with Louis Soi. Delay previous orders. All Maelstrom units are commanded to fall back effective immediately. Give the foreign levy priority. Let the main host cover their retreat and bring up the rear. Damn it! Relay the order. All flames are to withdraw. I don't care if our link cells are useless. You still have a working pair of legs, don't you? Well, use them, you bloody halfwit! The outcome of this battle was long since decided. Better to retreat now than risk a massacre. This dark, stifling presence. Who or what? We go to take our place beside Archon Louisois. To your positions. Kazbamul, so ginin wese donzul. Logalo, asawad deken bed mubu. Emirate way, kiss Katoga hearts water dawns. Seize me again, fees doon the only lamb rides a die dawn.
It has been 15 years, but the bitter taste of defeat lingers still. 15 years since the Imperial fleet set course for Mordona, led by the Egrios, mightiest of all vessels. Silver Till Lake lay ripe for the taking, and all of Eorzea would soon be ours. Or so we believed. But an innumerable host of dragons met us that day at the heart of which flew the great meat guard Zormer. Though we succeeded in slaying that lord among worms, the Dread Serpent's defeat was bought at too high a price. Our invincible flagship was lost, and all hope of victory with her so ended our glorious conquest. Eorzea, a blighted realm, riddled with false gods. Twice now it has eluded the Empire's grasp. For all the destruction it wrought, even Meteor, the Great Sin, failed to yield us control over it. And for this failure, the realm has sunk deeper into depravity. It is twisted beyond all reckoning, rotten nigh to the core. Yet, it must be saved. Only Garlean rule can bring order to Eorzea. It falls to us to deliver the misguided masses from their ignorance. We are of one mind, Lord Van Balzar. Hey, is the Legatus really planning to take another tilt at Eorzea? Hey, what hole have you been hiding in? We're in the midst of preparing for a new campaign, and a huge one at that. But I thought the Emperor had given up the Western lands for lost after Cartano. What could the Legatus possibly hope to gain by acting alone? I sense you harbor certain doubts over the wisdom of the Legatus's plan. Uh, my, my lord! Please, call me Nero. Tell me, where were you born? Othard, my lord. Alamigo, my lord. Ah, codename Hummingway, I presume? I... I don't know what you... Silence. Your denials will not change your fate. I assure you, Frumentarium sees all. <laughs> Clean up this mess, and do not miss any or I shall be most displeased. At, 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 at once, my lord. Garland, soon you will be made to know the true power of Magitek.
So you are the Lamincin envoy. And an adventurer besides. The realm owes much to you and yours. On behalf of our fair nation, I bid you welcome. Please. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Khan A. Senna, Elder Seed Seer of Gridania, and leader of the Order of the Twin Adder, our nation's grand company. I understand you bear a message from the Admiral. Ah, a guest from Limsa. I thought I smelled stale ale. I won't hold it against you. If you're half the warrior Mervib says, tis a wonder you don't reek of dead Sahagin. Welcome to the Sultanate of Uldah. I am Rauban al-Din, General of the Immortal Flames. But you did not come all this way to trade formalities. So you are the adventurer of whom I've heard so much. Well met, friend. My name is Minpilia, and I lead the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I have awaited your coming. Please, be at ease. You are among friends here. No doubt you are ripe to burst with questions. But have patience. All will be revealed in time. First, let me begin by telling you who we are and what we do. We are the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, an order that transcends political boundaries. Our single objective is the preservation of the future of Eorzea. Among our gravest concerns, are the godlike beings known as the Primals. Their existence is a bane upon Eorzea, nay, the world at large, and we have striven to find a lasting solution to the threat they pose. Our order is home to a number of individuals who, like you, possess a rare and special talent. This talent takes various forms but one holds particular interest for us. Tell me, have you ever experienced a sudden, inexplicable loss of consciousness? Have you ever had the sensation of being pulled away from reality? Felt as though you were hovering in space, a mind without a body? All these things are the manifestations of your talent. Yours is the power to transcend the boundaries of the soul, a power known as the Echo. The Echo allows you to pass through the walls of a man's soul and hear the resonations of his past. You will be there in his memories and see things as he saw them. You may even interact with that which you see, though you cannot change the outcome of events. For another blessing, the Echo will enable you to know a man's mind even if you cannot comprehend his words. In short, the Echo is a truly extraordinary power, and this power is strong within you. It is only a shame that we cannot use it whensoever we choose. That's right. I, too, possess the Echo. With that established, let us return to the subject of the Primals. So long as they exist, the realm cannot take so much as a single step towards true peace. Measures must be taken. Measures which transcend boundaries, be they of faction, race, language or creed. And to do so, 
The Scions require the aid of those with our talent. Make no mistake, the Echo will be instrumental in dealing with the primal threat. Without it, we cannot hope to save the realm. I know not what it is you desire for yourself, nor what it was that first brought you to Eorzea. But I firmly believe that the power we possess was given to us for a purpose. Why else would the gods entrust man with a gift so extraordinary, if not to have him use it? And so I implore you, lend us your power. I take it you will help us. Wonderful! I knew you wouldn't let us down. But come, I would introduce you to your friends in the Order. Tell me, does the name Charlian ring any bells? It used to be one of Eorzea's six city-states, and was situated in the northwest of Aldenard. The Charlians were the keepers of wisdom both old and new, their mastery over magic and ether was unsurpassed, and even the Garleans knew to fear them. Among their number, there were a noble few who devoted their lives to safeguarding the future of Eorzea. When the realm began its descent into chaos, and their countrymen fled for the motherland, they alone chose to remain here. These noble men and women were called the Archons. Those same brave souls stand before you now. The masked woman is Ida, and beside her is Popolimo. The two are charged with surveying the Twelve's Wood. Hello there. Welcome. <gasps> okay, my turn to introduce someone. That there is Thancred. He is our man here in Ulda, Jewel of the Desert. Welcome to the team. If I may, the lovely maiden beside me is named Yastola. Limsa Lominsa has the pleasure of being under her care. Greetings. I have been expecting you. Last but not least is Urianger, who presides over all affairs within these halls. Pray seek him out whenever you have questions. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. The words of a dear friend. I am glad of our meeting. At the Battle of Cartoneau, our leader was taken from us. But we did not stray from our purpose. We sought out Minfilia and others with her talent, and together established the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Along with the Archons, those blessed with the Echo play a pivotal role in our endeavour to forge a brighter tomorrow for the realm. Oh, I should also introduce you to Tataru, our clerk. She ensures that everything runs smoothly. Pleased to make your acquaintance. In time, I hope you will come to think of us as family. But without further ado, I would assign you your first task. Urianger, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have received a request for aid from the Immortal Flames. Thancred, would you do the honours? It would be my pleasure. Some days ago, a crystal caravan registered to Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern was waylaid and divested of its cargo. But there is more. 
Within a bell of the robbery, several people were reported missing from the shantytown outside the city. At a glance, one would assume the involvement of bandits, kidnappers and coincidence. Such crimes are hardly uncommon, and the immortal flames deal with their like almost every day. However, this time we have reason to believe that a primal is involved. Aye, the evidence left behind implicates the Amolja, who are known worshippers of Ifrit. If we then consider the objects that were taken, there is no room left for doubt. The crimes were committed in the name of a primal. That you may better understand the nature of our struggle with the primals, I would have you play the leading role in this investigation. You have my thanks. If there is aught you wish to know, I recommend you speak with Thancred. He is well versed in the affairs of Ulda. Ever at your service, fair lady. Behold, tis the Sultana Nanamo herself! And Roban as well! Hark you, souls of flame, drawn to the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore! Hurrah! Roban! Where since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ul dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold. Where by the grace and glory of Naldhar have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered. I speak of Uldar! There, at the Flame General's back flies the Grand Company's standard. Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cartano, none spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters, that they might know happiness in the great beyond, as Thor's honored guests. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this Seventh Umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided, 
downtrodden and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flames. It is but a slow death. Our enemies surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. Meanwhile, the Garlians make mock of our borders and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act. Whether trader or soldier, monetarist or royalist, all must recognize that a divided Uldar stands to fall. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek glory and wealth, look not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to ride forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you. Line not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flames. Seek not to prosper from Uldar, but to restore her to prosperity. As the realm prospers, so shall Uldar. As Uldar prospers, so shall her people. Ya yeah, for Uldar! Together we are one. Your grace. Raubon? People of Ulda, I, Nanamo, 17th in the line of Ul, address you. Much has been made of the wealth of Ulda. Yet those who measure that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. For the true wealth of Ulda lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. Beloved subjects, I bid you raise aloft the torch of Ulda, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all Eorzea to see. Long live Nanamo! Glory to the Sultana! For victory and fortune, stride fearless into the inferno, for we are by fire reborn! Forsooth? The time is now! I believe! If you'll permit me, Alfie, no. And my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. I lost my son to the Calamity. The three Seed Seers are all together. Some say you couldn't take a step without stumbling over a body. Our forebears were once strangers in the Twelve's Wood. Fearful of the green wrath, they hid themselves in the dark recesses of the earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the elementals and were granted a place beneath the boughs. So it was that Gradania was born some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, 
The Hure and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization. And soon, they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity, and blessed by the light of the matron, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. Do you see the Gridanian standard? There, hanging behind the Elder Seed Seer. The entwined serpents represent the unity between Hur and Elizan. An elegant symbol, do you not agree? In accordance with the will of the Elementals, we have embraced a life of peace. Alas, our neighbors have not always sought the same for themselves, nor for us. Though we Gridanians have no love for war, we have still less for those who would threaten our way of life. Ever have we fought to protect the sanctity of the Twelveswood. When the Garlean Empire brought its War of Conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance, that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. Five years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartano. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day, for soon came the Calamity. The scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed, each waking hour a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixul have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark times are upon us. Time was a man could a walk the high roads itself. without fear. On this day, five years ago, countless Eorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. Please join with me in honoring their memory. And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell? The destruction wrought by the Calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. 
Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action. I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder Standard. And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient boughs. For serenity, purity, and sanctity. We must think of the children! Woods will be done! It's up to us to protect the forest! All the elementals! The Garleans are another matter altogether. So much for our alliance. It's sunk beyond the seabed. Brothers and sisters of the sea, hearken unto me. Look upon this, our mighty crimson standard, and tell me your hearts do not swell with pride. Seven hundred summers have come and gone since our forefathers first ran aground in this fertile bay. In that time, guided by the mother of oceans, Limsa Lominsa has grown from humble fishing village to uncontested ruler of the five seas and beyond. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. The Crimson Field is meant to signify the blood of fallen crewmates, while the Black Longship represents a pirate vessel. When the Galian Empire marched upon Eorzea, we assembled beneath the Maelstrom Standard, and our Grand Company was reborn. All answered the call, from the Knights of the Barracuda to Hilfir's bloody executioners, and together we met our would-be conquerors upon the field of Cartano. That day, the world bore witness to the united strength of Limsa Lominsa. I swear to you, no army ever fought harder or with more courage, yet many of ours did not survive. Join me now in remembering those who fought in the name of freedom and fell. May their souls be returned to the sea. Freedom. Yes, they have always been rather fond of their freedom. Much as the beast tribes have. A small wonder. Beneath the surface, one would struggle to tell them apart. It has been five long years since the Calamity struck. Five long years of tireless rebuilding. Yet still the wounds of the Calamity fester and weep. But when I stand atop the mizzenmast and gaze out upon our battered and broken vessel, I see an undying spirit. Did we not build all this from the wreck of the Galadian all those centuries ago? Shall we not do so again? 
Yet there are those who would see this ship of ours sink beneath the waves of the restless Rotano. The Sahagin creep ashore, seeking blood for their accursed god. Those fishback the bastards! The Sahagin have risen? While the mines of Ogomoro spew forth kobolds who push ever south, despoiling our lands as they go. These savage beast tribes will be the first waves to crash against our creaking hull. And behind them swells the grim tide of the Garlean Empire. Even now the Kurs fly their flags within our borders. Doubt not, but that they will be upon us ere long. We are well nigh surrounded. Yet there are those among us who would rather turn their swords against their crewmates than our cannons against our foes. How can we hope to repel our many enemies when mutiny breeds below deck? There is but one course left to us. One bearing that will bring us victory over the beast hordes and the Empire both and see this ship safe to port. We must mend the rift the Calamity has reopened twixt Pirate and Maelstrom, and stand fast with our adventurer brothers against the coming Tempest. Mark ye well, a crew without unity is no crew at all. Tis but a mass of drowned men. To me, then, brothers and sisters of the sea, gather beneath the undying crimson standard and pledge me your strength, your skill, your wisdom. And with the guidance of the navigator, this great vessel of ours shall ride the waves till sea swallows all. Long live the Admiral! Admiral Melvin! Gather the lads! Oh, where's me cutlass? I'll follow ye to the seven hells, Admiral. <sighs> the gods only know what grand company our adventurer friend will keep. Hm. The wheels of change are in motion regardless. Brother, are you certain this course is best? Whatever do you mean, dear sister? The so-called remembrance ceremonies were little more than standard-waving rallies. As though the Calamity and Seventh Umbral Era warranted scarcely a mention. Well, of course they were standard-waving rallies. Since you are so observant, mayhap you noticed what mention was made of the Warriors of Light? None. I suppose they must have forgotten the heroes who spared Eorzea a fate worse than the Calamity? No, dear Alizé, they haven't forgotten these details. They have elected to omit them. Deep are the wounds the Calamity inflicted upon Eorzea. So deep, in fact, that the realm still bleeds. Needless to say, the beast tribes and their primals do little to alleviate the pain. So, the task of salving Eorzea's wounds falls to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, with a little help from our friends, the Grand Companies. Remembrance will yield no remedy. If our world is to heal, we must put the horrors of the Calamity behind us. Our grandfather would never entrust the fate of the realm to despots who rewrite history to their convenience. There must be another way to cure what ails this world, and I mean to find it. 
You are most welcome to try. Our paths may differ, but our destination is the same. In time, I dare say we will see eye to eye. I should hope so. M m my lady! We are to escort you! Hope does not come into it. We share the burden of this fate, dear sister, and will prevail together or not at all. The salve will serve not only to close up our present wounds, but prevent old ones from opening anew. Now, having set aside the formalities, we have a favor to ask of you. Eriange, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have conducted a study at the behest of the Order of the Twin Adder. Papalimo, Ida, a synopsis, if you would. Our task was to survey the behavior of the Sylphs, a beast tribe indigenous to the Twelveswood. Oh, how to describe them. They look like gizzle greens, floating ones, that worship the primal Ramu. Ahem. <clears throat> Though technically a beast tribe, Sylphs are blessed with a comparatively personable demeanor, conducive to peaceful communication. Offering us an invaluable opportunity to learn what the beast tribes know of the primals. While Ramu's existence is well documented, the Sylphs do not, or perhaps cannot, summon the Primal any longer, insofar as can be ascertained, until such time as we know. It would be unwise to assume that the threat posed by the Primal has passed. Which leaves Gridania with the added worry of not knowing what they should be worrying about. In that regard, they are hardly alone. What we can say with absolute certainty is that Gridania has its hands full fending off Garuda. Who, I need hardly remind you, is among the most savage and terrible of all known primals. In short, it is essential that we approach the Sylphs in as diplomatic a manner as possible. Words and actions can be misconstrued. The only sure way to communicate our intentions is the Echo. Winning the Sylph's favor may well bring us a step closer to mitigating the threat of the Primals. Will you help us? I am grateful. Lovely. Well, as much as I'd like to help, I'm afraid I would be of little use to anyone in Gridania. A veritable babe in the woods. Ida and Papalimo, however, should be able to see the forest for the trees. Is that not so, Minfilia? Indeed. You are willing? Leave it to me! Us, Ida! Us! Darkness. <laughs> El Kol Hidra Buglo Hans. <laughs> Seize that on Raja Dorn. Thagon well rogue. Tosan no Paiki. 
Mayhap I might if I deign to speak in my guest crude tongue. We meet at last. I am Laha Brea of the Asians, servant to the one true god. Yours is a most fantastical tale, truly absorbing. It is a tale to tell Eorzea's children before bedtime, and it will soon be dark, bringer of light. The Dark Minions. All that stands between this world and darkness is an irksome anomaly in the ether. The Echo. Yes, yours is a most fascinating tale. Alas, like all good tales, it must needs come to an end, but fear not. Hear, feel, the presence of evil. For the end of your tale is but the beginning of another. The tale of the Crystal's demise. The Maelstrom requests our assistance. Concerning the kobolds they sent such copious notes on, I presume? Yes. And no, it has more to do with their findings, which portend a peril far greater than any beast tribe. What sort of peril? The worst kind. A tribe of kobolds in the vicinity of Limsa Lominsa has reawakened Titan. Our task will be to slay the primal. The Maelstrom have sworn support for the endeavor. They are no strangers to the havoc kobolds can wreak. Years before the Grand Company's reformation, two primals, Leviathan and Titan, chanced to converge upon the sea wall, wreaking untold devastation. There, by the grace of the Navigator, were the mercenaries Melvip hired able to fend them off. Yet it did not take long for the beast tribes to regroup, and they summoned their primals once more. Thankfully, their second coming was decidedly short-lived, but that is beside the point. So long as tormented souls will them to exist, the realm will never be rid of primals. The Maelstrom has kept a watchful eye upon the beast tribes, and the kobolds in particular, ever since. Which brings us to the matter at hand, Unlike Ifrit, we know scarcely anything of Titan. Unfortunately, the only force known to have bested him, the modestly named Company of Heroes, disbanded five years since, and mercenaries are not in the habit of keeping chronicles. Expect the worst. The Maelstrom's help is of course appreciated, but even if we had their whole armada at our disposal, we could still find ourselves overmatched. A pity the kobolds lack the gentle sensibilities of the sylphs. A peaceful resolution would be more than welcome. The Echo will not avail you this time, I fear. 
If you are to survive, your steel must needs speak for you. No one would think you a coward were you to decline. So you will accept? Thank you. We can't very well send her to Limsa Lominsa without Yastola, can we, Minfilia? May I ask that of you, Yastola? I never thought it in question. Ever reliable. Very well. We will spare no effort to win victory. You may count on the full support of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. And all not a field will aid the fight from afar. Sancred, Ida, go to the Grand Companies. Tell them of our plight and solicit their support. Ariange, send word to the students of Baldessian and Alfino if you would. Papalimo, compile all the information we have on Titan, little though it may be. You will be apprised of the tactical situation when you reach the Sailor's Ward. Provision yourself for the journey. May you walk in the light of the crystal. We'll be awaiting your return at the Waking Sands. There is much to discuss. Godspeed. Thank heaven she is safe. Louisois, do you see? Your light shines brightly in this one, and in time it will illuminate the realm once more. No further! We have come for the one who slayed Ifrit and Titan. Bring her forth, and you may yet know mercy. <laughs> Confound it. Stay out of sight. I would leave a message with you. I surrender myself on the condition you spare the innocents. Conditions? There speaks the Supreme Scion. I'll grant you have courage, but you would be better served by armor. Search all you will. The one you seek is not here.
So, it would seem. And yet you knew to look here. But how? <gasps> Hold that thought. Conditions of surrender denied. Cease at once! <laughs> Have you not done enough? Perhaps. Enough. We must away. Though we have not found our quarry, the High Priestess of the Scions should suffice for now. They say she also possesses the Echo. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear her scream. I said enough! We leave. Bring the prisoners. Hmm. I fondly hoped that I might be the first to speak with you. Would that I had been so fortunate. At ease, adventurer. I come not on behalf of the Empire. On the contrary, I mean to revive the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. And to that end... I have come in search of a legend. The greatest engineer of our time, Master Sid Garland, I have come for you. I fear you are mistaken, child. He is but a poor soul who bore witness to the horrors at Cartano. I beg of you, leave us in peace. Wait, I... <laughs> Hear me, Sid. Eorzea needs you. Sid, was it? Here. These belong to you. I thought you bore the mark of greatness. It seems that I was right. Our time together was all too brief, but it felt as though my son had returned to me. You have brought joy to an old man's life. It is time for you to help those who truly need you. Who are you? Alfino Leveilleur, at your service. As a scion of the Seventh Dawn, I stand against our primal and imperial foes, as my grandfather once did. Tis no secret what befell our order at the Waking Sands. Word has already spread across Eorzea. The repercussions are far greater than you realize. In the wake of the Calamity, the three city-states focused their efforts solely on reconstruction. 
leaving the Scions to combat the primal threat unaided. And lo, we are all but destroyed. Yet even as the nations mourn our demise and abandon what little hope they have left, we cannot forsake our duty, now least of all. The Ixal have summoned Garuda once more, and she torments the people of Kurthus as we speak. Her appetite for destruction far exceeds that of other primals. Worse, in her present incarnation, our Baldessian colleagues believe she surpasses both Ifrit and Titan in strength. Yet, therein lies an opportunity. Were we somehow to defeat Garuda, it would serve as a warning to the other beast tribes that even their mightiest gods can be felled. If we are to face our foe, we must first circumvent the tempest that shields her sanctuary. And for that, we need an airship. Your airship, Sid. I... I have an airship? Yes, Sid, you do. Your very own airship. It was last seen in the skies over Gridania, not long before the Calamity, so let us begin our search there. Uh, an, an airship? Uh, my airship? Oh, wait. Come, let us put an end to the primals. Together, we will show the world that the Scions are still a force to be reckoned with. Mm. They need my airship. They need... Me. Ah, <sighs> there. She's ready. Ah, she stirs. To Kurthus, and an audience with the Harpy Queen Garuda. Enterprise, engage. Damn it. Oh, I... I once flew in this airship, and I was not alone. There were adventurers on board. Adventurers like you.
Just how long have I worn these damn goggles? Ah, uh, yes. I fancied myself a trendsetter in my younger days. The young prodigy, admired by all. Exactly like his father. Born and raised in Garlemald. It was only natural that the precocious young student should become an engineer. Had his father not done the same? Father, when did we stop seeing eye to eye? When did Meteor become your everything, and your loved ones cease to matter? You abandoned us all, but he was there for me, father. There for me when you were not. Though he proved no better in the end. Gaius was just another man with an all-consuming obsession. And so I ran, left the Empire behind, and came to Eorzea, where I built the ironworks. Ah yes, it was then that I first donned these goggles. Eorzea opened my eyes. It was home to so many manner of people, each with their own hopes and dreams. People weren't saving, and so I fought beside them. I wanted to prove that my knowledge could serve a nobler purpose. I wanted to prove that there was another way. And it all began that day when I found my new home. I had forgotten how wonderful it was. The wind in your hair, the endless sky. That light. It was you, wasn't it? It's surprising how few people know this, but all pure blood guardians have a third eye. 
Perhaps mine helped me recognize you, or perhaps it was just a lucky guess. The Enterprise was made for this. To carry Eorzea's protectors into battle. I am proud to be able to call her my own. Sid? What exactly do you remember? Alphinord, my boy. Sorry to have been such a burden. I remember everything. My name, my people, and my purpose. Everything. Come, it would be rude to keep Garuda waiting. Why do you not tremble at my might? Why do you not beg for mercy? Why do you not die? We've done it! Ah! Impossible it is! Kill you all! Is that all? O oh, Lady of the Vortex! O oh, mighty Garuda! Of all primals, the most terrible, I say again. Is that all? Gaius! Ah, uh, Sid, my boy. You look well. For one who has forsaken kin and country. I wonder what else you will forsake before the day is done. What? What exactly did you hope to accomplish here this day? I... Well, I shall accomplish far more. Is that all? Is that all? Insolent mortal! I shall make you suffer! That foul stench! I see now. She has touched you! Very well. Seven hells, does she still mean to fight? Our oh, Lord of the Inferno, Almighty Ifrit, grant us succor in our hour of need! Save us, Titan, Lord of Crags! Oh, it hurts us so! The pain! The pain! What is she? Twelve Preserve. She cannot mean to... No. No, this is all wrong. Stop gopping, boy. We must run. Surrender yourselves unto me. I would feast upon your ether. 
None shall stand against the wind! Bear witness to the glory of the Empire! It is you who will suffer, Garuda. Ancient Alec had ways of dealing with your kind. Now, look on their ultimate weapon, Icon, and despair. Magnificent. It exceeds all expectation. With each primal it consumes, it grows more powerful. A marvel, is it not? Such is the fate of those who oppose the Empire. There will be no warriors of light to save you this time. If your leaders are as wise as they are reported, they will surrender. Your skills are impressive but they will not be enough. Twelve, have mercy. What chance have we against such an ungodly creation? And who was that armored devil? That was Gaius Van Balsar, Legatus of the 14th Imperial Legion, and Supreme Commander of the Garlean Invasion Force in Eorzea. Of course. The Black Wolf. How could I not realize? Grandfather mentions him in his journal. I was never so naive as to think the man would abandon his ambitions. But these developments are beyond my worst expectations. What have you been doing these past five years? How could something of this magnitude have escaped the Alliance's attention? We heard no whispers, saw no signs. In the wake of the Calamity, the Empire seized land and built outposts, but that was the extent of their aggression. Damn it, Gaius! Where in the Seven Hells did you find that thing? It has been a day of unexpected developments. But the fact remains, Garuda is no longer a threat. While I take no comfort in the manner of her downfall, it does mean that we may safely put the matter of the Primals to one side. For the time being, at least. Which just leaves the matter of Gaius's new toy. Indeed. That weapon poses the greatest threat to Eorzea. It must be destroyed. But first, we must needs find out all we can. Let us make for Vesper Bay. We shall rebuild the Scions. All is not yet lost, my friend. 
for we bear the light and shall surely lead our people from the darkness. Bringer of light. Brave gatherer of the crystals, thy soul burneth bright. I am Hydaelyn, all made one. Hearken unto me now, for the darkness doth begin to spread. Wear thee the bearer of the crimson brand, for he is the avatar of shadow, whom death attendeth always. The crystals shall be thy salvation, thy blade and shield both. Steal thyself, for at the appointed hour thou shalt stare into the heart of darkness. Go with caution, my child, but fear not, for I am ever with thee. Ugh! You have spirit, that I will allow. Yet you struggle to the benefit of none, least of all yourself. This echo of yours intrigues us. We desire only to understand it, and for that we need your help. You wish to be rid of the icons, do you not? You would have saved yourself a great deal of torment had you accepted our aid from the beginning. Tell me everything, and I shall end it quickly. Refuse, and though you beg for death, you shall not have it. Which will it be? As you wish, my dear Minfilia. Unpleasant though it will be for all concerned, you leave us no choice but to employ more rigorous methods of study. Be so kind as to deliver the prisoners to Castrum Meridianum. Yes, milady. Take the leader! Kill the rest! What the...? He has stolen! Pray, forgive us our delay! Papalimo! Minfilia! Ida! What 
took you so long. Well, it's nice to see you too. The reunion must wait. Right, first things first. Yes, let's get back to being heavily outnumbered. You ditched your Magitek armor. Fool of a Lalafell! Well, excuse me. She's all yours if you think you can do any better. But there's no one in there. This is Sid. Can you hear me? I need you to count to five, then jump. Understood? One. Two. Three. Four. I know not which is more pitiful. The charlatans who rule Eorzea or the masses that clamor for their implausible panaceas. I see that which they cannot. This realm founders for want of a ruler with true power, the power to cast down icons. If you continue to deny this truth, it is the people who will suffer. Embrace reason. Oh. What in the seven hells? Oh no, it's here. Twelve preserve us. They finished it. Ultima weapon. So it has a name. It is a relic of ancient Alag, excavated from its resting place deep beneath Alamigo. The Alagans used it to crush primal and foe alike, and now the Garleans mean to do the same. Damn you, Gaius! Look! There, beside the Black Wolf! An Asian. An overlord, no less. His garb attests to that. La Habrea. It could only be him. Thancred! He was La Habrea? No. No, this cannot be. We have to go now. Hang on. Thancred! No! <laughs> Oh. 
All that time, the enemy was beside me, and I never even suspected. And to think that it was I who suggested that Thancred investigate the Asians. <sighs> How could I have been so blind? Small wonder the enemy knew our every move, and where to find us! Ugh. Confound it all! No. No, this is not the time for self-doubt. The Alliance leaders staked their hopes on the Scions, but now they believe us all dead or missing. When they learn of the Empire's new weapon, we cannot be certain what they will do. We must go and offer them what assurances we can that defeat is not inevitable. Cryo? This is Minfilia. The situation may I'm have taken an haste, ill turn. So forgive me if I seem brusque. The item but the battle is far from over. Is it ready? And so long as we stand Wonderful. together, there I'm shall so ever be hope of victory. Need it urgently. How soon can it be delivered? The people of Eorzea falter for want of such hope. I am in your debt, Let my us friend. provide it. Let us bear to them the tidings that the Scions of the Seventh Dawn are returned. Matters are coming to a head. I hope we can count on you. My regards to Grandfather. I am ready. Let us pay a visit to the Council of the Alliance leadership. Ah, we keep treading the same ground. Van Belsar's demands are clear. Alas, our minds are not. I've never been one to shy from a fight, but if this weapon of theirs can do all they claim... It has been five years since the Calamity, and our people have scarce begun to rebuild their lives. Can we now, in good conscience, call upon them to risk what little they have left? I would spare them the pain of further conflict. Conflict, I say, though that would imply forces set in opposition. If the combined might of three primals could not stay Garlemald's new terror, what meaningful resistance can we offer? We who struggle to quell the foes who rise up within our own borders. Long have we fought the Primals, but to what end? We strike them down at no small cost, only for them to rise again and again. Are we to play this profitless game for the rest of days? I, for one, grow tired of it. Mistake me not. I do not propose to trade one tyranny for another. I love liberty. But conciliation need not mean oppression. By the Twelve, though neither of you cried surrender, your every word betokened it. <sighs> not that I deny there is truth in what you say. Nor can I rightly claim that Ulda is ready to fight. Refugees flood our gates, and beastmen swarm our land, while the great and the good do nothing. My flames struggle to bear the burden. I put on a grand show at the Remembrance Service, made all manner of lofty promises. I've made good on not a bloody one. Do not blame yourself, Raoban. You said only that which the people needed to hear. All present have done the same. 
our citizens had become lost to hope. If our words serve to kindle it in them anew, better we speak than remain silent. Our enemy condemns us for failing our people. Yet what does he care for their well-being? While we labored to rebuild their lives, the Black Wolf built instruments of murder with which to end them. Her Majesty speaks true. For all our failings, the people's well-being has ever been our foremost priority. While none among us ever doubted that the Empire would one day resume its war, we scarcely had means enough to solve the problems of the present. Aye, which is why we look to others to safeguard our future. The Scions of the Seventh Dawn, alas, they are gone, and the Black Wolf is at our door. Admiral! I fear you are mistaken! Alphinord? Minfilia? And Seven Hells! Master Garland? And you, dear friend. By Ralga, you're alive. All of you. As we approached, I would swear I heard talk of surrender. But I know that cannot be. It is not the Eorzean way. Hear me, my friends. Accepting the Gallians' offer to vanquish the Primals would be folly. Folly, I say. For might is not the answer to the Primal threat. Indeed, the more the Empire exerts its strength, the worse matters will become. Primals enter this world when mortals call upon them, and mortals are wont to appeal to a higher power when they are desperate. Nothing is more certain to breed desperation in the beast tribes than the Garlean's proposed solution. The true answer lies in a lasting peace, but the Garleans only know war and conquest. Should Eorzea fall into their hands, there will be such suffering as none can imagine. We are not blind to the many challenges that each of your nations face. Yet you must not give in. I Remember five years ago when you wagered all for the sake of the realm? Remember what you fought for, what you were willing to die for. Let the memories rekindle the fire in your heart, for Eorzea has need of it again. Come what may, we Scions will never give up the fight. And so I bid you stand with us, and together we shall safeguard the future of the realm. A great man once said that a shrewd merchant grasps not for the quick profit, but invests in the future. Wise words, eh, Raban? Sid, I... Uh... Your words stir and shame me in equal measure. How could I contemplate surrender? I know full well that all we have, we owe to the sacrifices of those who went before us. Yet the seeming hopelessness of our plight robbed me of my insight. We Gridanians have no love for war. Yet we have still less for those who would threaten our homeland. Ever have we fought to protect those things we hold dear, and this shall never change. Gridania will go to war. 
We will fight the Empire for the sake of the realm and all who abide here. I lost one homeland. The thought of losing another had blunted my resolve. But no man knows better than I that if you want aught, you'd best be ready to die for it. With great danger comes the chance for great glory and great profit. We old dons who have turned sand into gold know this well. How many times have we fallen into the pit of despair, only to have you pluck us out? I've fair lost count. Reckless. The lot of you. Like bloody pirates. Well, I won't waste my breath trying to talk you round. On account of being a pirate myself. And the pirate who shrinks from a challenge is no pirate at all. Those who would pick a quarrel with us must choose. Back down or go down with all hands. Let the Garleans come. The united strength of Limsa Lominsa will be waiting for them. If our realm is to be free of this pall of darkness, let it be by our own hands. For Eorzea! We must needs consider how the weapon may be brought to bear against us. The Maelstrom will secure strategic points along the coastline. In the meantime, the flames will deploy at... Be at ease, my friends. You have banished our doubts. Pray leave the military matters to us and retire to the Waking Sands. We will send word anon. I cannot well express my relief to think that the Alliance came so close to surrender. But the fire in their hearts has been rekindled, and they will fight to the last. This warmth inside, did you feel it too, Grandfather? I would know something. Was that your power at work earlier? Nothing of the sort. The leaders of Eorzea had lost their way. I merely helped them to find it again. Oh, hello. Yes, our party returned just a moment ago. How close are you? It's all right, Sid. We must needs plan our next move. Pray continue liaising with your respective nations. Sid, would you be our man in Ulda? I'll be whatever and wherever you need me to be. We haven't a moment to waste. All right, let's do this. Sancred's fate weighs heavy on my mind. I cannot bear to think of him enthralled to an Asian. Mayhap you know this already, but...
but the Asians are immortal beings without physical form. Since time immemorial, they have fanned the flames of chaos from the shadows. That they might work unseen, the Asians entrap and possess mortal men by means of malign artifacts known as Crystals of Darkness. One such crystal may yet be the key to saving Thancred. This is a crystal of darkness. A mere replica, created using data obtained from anomalous crystals found across Eorzea. It comes to us courtesy of the students of Baldessian, our distant allies. Even for an Archon, Thancred's talents are exceptional. We all had complete confidence in him. It was for this reason that none among us foresaw the danger in sending him to investigate the Asians alone. Thancred had been striving to fill the void left by Louis Soir. Yet, it was plain that he was overtaxing himself. Yeah, he would volunteer for everything and work till he was dizzy. And the toll taken by his exertions made him vulnerable to Asian influence. The crystal that binds Thancred must be somewhere on his person. If we could but destroy it, his Asian possessor would be compelled to relinquish control over him. You have proven the stoutest of allies, standing with us through thick and thin. Yet the most perilous struggle is still to come. For the sake of the realm, and Thancred, I ask that you lend us your strength once more. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. As I am sure you are aware, the realm was saved from certain doom five years ago by heroes known as the Warriors of Light. What you may not be aware of is that your many feats in service to the Scions have prompted folk to make certain... comparisons. I must confess, you do remind me of them. Yet remember this. However glorious the past, it is the hero's lot to be judged on the deeds of the present. A new darkness threatens the realm, and the people cry out for a savior. I believe that you are she, a warrior of light, here in the present, guided by the crystal's will. Come, my friends. Let us fight to safeguard the future of our beloved Eorzea. Look for the lips control panel. It'll be somewhere nearby. Take the lift down, and you should find yourself in the chamber of the Ultima Weapon. Your eyes peel. Gaius could be waiting for you down there. Oh, and don't even think about dying. You're too bloody useful. <sighs> the interference is getting worse. I don't think the connection will last much. Tell me, for whom do you fight? <laughs> How very glib. And do you believe in Eorzea? A 
Eorzea's unity is forged of falsehoods. Its city-states are built on deceit, and its faith is an instrument of deception. It is not but a cobweb of lies. To believe in Eorzea is to believe in nothing. In Eorzea, the beast tribes often summon gods to fight in their stead, though your comrades only rarely respond in kind. Which is strange, is it not? Are the Twelve otherwise engaged? I was given to understand they were your protectors. If you truly believe them, your guardians, why do you not repeat the trick that served you so well at Cartano and call them down? They will answer, so long as you lavish them with crystals and gorge them on ether. Your gods are no different from those of the beasts, icons, everyone, except for this and you will see how Eorzea's faith is bleeding the land dry. Nor is this unknown to your masters, which prompts the question, why do they cling to these false deities? What drives even men of learning, even the great Louis Soi, to grovel at their feet? The answer? Your masters lack the strength to do otherwise! For the world of man to mean anything, man must own the world. To this end, he hath fought ever to raise himself through conflict, to grow rich through conquest. And when the dust of battle settles, it is ever the strong who dictate the fate of the weak. Knowing this, but a single path is open to the infinite ruler, that of false worship. A path which leads to innovation and death. Only a man of power can rightly steer the course of civilization. And in this land of creeping mendacity, that one truth will prove its salvation. Champion of Eorzea, face me. Your defeat shall serve as proof of my readiness to rule. It is only right that I should take your realm, for none among you has the power to stop me. Mm. I had not thought to be so hard-pressed. <sighs> Your strength is most impressive. Such power befits a ruler. Yet, you lack the resolve to put it to proper use. A waste. Allow me then, hero, to do that which you will not.
witness to the true power of the Ultima Weapon. Ultima weapon is all powerful. Why does my enemy still stand? Can her strength truly be so great? It is the blessing of light that confounds you. La Habrea. Your foe acts under the protection of the crystal she bears. So, this is what empowers her. Beyond mortal limits. If you are to prevail, the Hammer of Darkness must needs be brought to bear upon the Shield of Light. And so it shall, for the Ultima Weapon is host to a power of which you are as yet ignorant. Speak plainly, Asian. The heart of Sabik. It is the weapon's core, an enigma whose surface even the vaunted scholars of ancient Alec failed to scratch. The magic within has lain dormant for eons. Of what magic do you speak? A spell without parallel, Ultima. I sought the life force of the primals for no other reason but to quicken the core. For the true power of the Ultima Weapon lies within its now beating heart. Lahabrea, what have you done? No more than was necessary for my god to be reborn. Damn you, Asian. The hour is at hand. Behold but a sliver of my god's power. And from the deepest pit of the Seven Hells to the very pinnacle of the heavens, the world shall tremble! Unleash Ultima! This was not my intention. Oh, Hydaelyn. It seems the task of keeping your champion alive has exhausted what strength you had left. Van Belzar, your enemy's shield is broken. The rest I leave to you. We will speak later, Asian. But first, I must deal with you. The question of who is mightier remains. Come, 
adventurer. Let us find the answer together. Heed me, the subjects of a weak ruler must needs look to a higher power for providence, and their dependence comes at a cost to the realm. The misguided elevate the frail, and the frail lead the people astray. Unless a man of power rests control, the cycle will never be broken. You, you of all people must see the truth in this. You who have the strength to rule. Pathetic. You boasted of unrivaled power. You were entrusted with the ultimate weapon. The ultimate magic. And still, you failed. So much for the glory of man. The growing imbalance afflicting the planet must be redressed. If it is permitted to worsen, the very laws of existence, both etheric and physical, will be warped beyond all recognition. Know you the root of this corruption? Hydaelyn! Like a parasite, she must be burned out if the planet is to recover. And not but the return of the one true god will ensure her complete excision. Yet, to pave the way for the Master's return, a chaotic confluence of untold proportions must needs be brought about. And that will necessitate the presence of the Primals. Needless to say, both you and your Scion accomplices cannot be suffered to interfere in this endeavor. You will not leave this place alive. It is past time your flame was extinguished, bringer of light.
If thou wouldst pierce the shadows, make thee a blade of light. What? And so my conquest ends, Sid. In smoke and ashes. Beloved daughter, the darkness hath fled before the unclosed brilliance of thy spirit. Yet it lingereth still beyond the sight of men in forgotten corners of the world. In the depths of the abyss yet resideth the Dark One, watchful ever. Till this evil be cast out, never shall the world know aught but a passing peace. Yet for the present, a gentle light shineth o'er the realm of Eorzea. 
with thee at its heart. From sparkling moat shall it swell to glorious sun, and all the world shall bask in its warmth. Blessings and joy be upon thee. Go forth, my child, and be as a beacon of hope for Eorzea and the lands beyond through all the days of thy life. My lady, all Twin Adder units have fallen back to the outer perimeter. The flames have completed their withdrawal, General. Admiral, all hands accounted for. She's still in there. Sid! Has there been no word? <sighs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Damnation! She's going to make it, I know she is. Ida is right. We must have faith. Sid, can they not be evacuated aboard the Enterprise? That adventurer and the Scions are as the Warriors of Light reborn. We cannot abandon them to their fate. Not again. I wholeheartedly agree, but flying into the midst of that would only add to the fireworks. There must be something we can do. Please, Mother Hydaelyn. Please light her way through the darkness. Look into the light, my child. If thou would see thy companions return safe to thee, reach out to them now. The hero returns! Look! Thancred is with her! Thank the Twelve! Thank Hydaelyn. Welcome home! You almost got us killed that one time, remember? Now, now. We both know that was your fault. Thank the Twelve, we're safe. Mind your horns there, Manbull. Ah, mayhap when you mind your manners. Though the crystal that bound Thancred is no more, I doubt we can say the same of La Habrea. And even if we could, we know that he is not alone. Confounded Assians. Their god may be unknown to us, but their zeal is unquestionable. Suffice it to say, it would be folly to assume that they no longer pose a threat. Nevertheless,
For now, we must savor what peace we have won, however ephemeral. Do you see, Grandfather? Our first step towards realizing the dream for which you gave your life. Friends, the dread night of Imperial tyranny, Anassian machination, is ended. A new day now begins in Eorzea. True to their name, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, along with our champion, have delivered us from darkness. Let their shared victory serve to remind us of our shared history and let their bravery in the face of adversity inspire future generations. Doubt not, the realm will need bravery in the days to come. Old rifts threaten to divide us within our walls, while hordes of beastmen claw at our gates. And though the Black Wolf be slain, the rest of the pack remains. Yet no foe need we fear, so long as we stand as one. So long as the Scion stand for peace. So long as our champion stands fast. For there exists no adversity over which we may not jointly prevail. No longer can we turn a blind eye to the suffering of our allies. No nation stands alone. If one should fall, so shall we all. Eorzea is our shared home. For any one of us to know peace, so too must our neighbor. Just as we join in solidarity before you this day, so too shall our grand companies be joined henceforth to strive not only for the good of mere nations, but for the good of all the realm. Change will not come overnight. Yet I foresee a day, not so very far from now, when the lines that divide our lands fade, and all of Eorzea is one. It has been but five short years since the Battle of Cartano. Five years since the advent of the Seventh Umbral Era. No victory, however sweet, can wash away our bitter sorrows. No triumph can reclaim those we lost. Yet do not presume you honor them by dwelling on the past. It was not the past they fought for. You would repay their sacrifice by looking to the future. A future united! as the Warriors of Light united in the Champion. Now is the time for us to rise as one, bearing all of Eorzea on our shoulders. Five years ago, Eorzea bore witness to the end of the Sixth Astral Era. Now, the Seventh Umbral Era draws to a close, yet we come together not to glory in its end, but to mark a new beginning. Let it be writ that, that on this day, by the light of the crystal, Eorzea ushered in a new era. The seventh astral era is come, and thus is ours a realm reborn.
What is it? Oh! Ah, what was that? Ah! That roar. It can't be. Did you hear that? There's no time to spare. Where is it coming from? Dread tidings, chaos and carnage! It is an abomination! A primal! A primal has awakened! Bahamul, move! One Azaz, move, star! Fanzad, look, pai, ki hads, hodorn, zul, ukudorn. Star Chemuv, the only cars that pours right ball. He is almost whole again. His size is staggering. I can scarce imagine how Grandfather stood against such a monstrosity. This cannot be allowed to proceed any further. Let us disable the coil and move on. Grandfather? No, that man is dead. I will not dishonor my beloved grandsire's memory by calling you such. You are but his twisted shape, the thrall of a mad primal. You were foolish to disregard my warning, child. Are you so convinced of your own righteousness? It is the rightness of our path that led us to return. Eorzea will never be safe whilst Bahamut remains to threaten all we hold dear. What of the hero who gave his life in defense of the realm? Do you truly dispute the justice of our cause? My poor, ignorant grandchildren. Your world is shaped by naught but recent conflict. Listen, and I will speak to you of justice. Twas in the twilight of the Third Astral Era. The southern land of Merosidia suffered invasion at the hands of the Alagon Empire. 
with no atrocity, too depraved for their purpose. The forces of Alec were unstoppable in their advance. Desperate for salvation, the dragons prayed to one of their first brood, to their ancestor Bahamut. Infused by the power of their fervent supplications, Bahamut arose from the abyss of death and took wing as the Merosidian's newborn god. Yet this great miracle would only serve to further the maniacal designs of the dragon's imperial conquerors, the cruel fetters which bind my lord stand testament to the Alagon's boundless greed and hubris. I once summoned the Twelve in an attempt to forestall the advent of the Seventh Umbral Era. What then did the dragons of Merosidia do that I did not? Wherefore are they accursed and I exalted? Tis man's overweening belief in his own primacy that blinds him to the commonness of his condition and the truth of his own tyranny. As long as man is suffered to remain, the dragons shall never be at peace. Only when the plague of people has been expunged, shall the children of Lord Bahamut be free. Then shall the world know true justice. Stop it! Grandfather would never say such things. His belief that people were worth saving never faltered. He had faith in their strength, that they could stand together and push back against the darkness seeking to shape them. A false hope. Tis folly to place one's faith in so flawed a race. Stand together? Huh. They would first need to agree on which direction to face. If history teaches us anything, it is that man cannot find common ground between his own two feet. Even you, twins whose veins run with the same blood, struggle to fathom each other's reasoning. You hide your differing agendas behind the convenient banner of Eorzea's salvation. Given your obvious self-interest, can you truly claim no kinship with the oligarchs? And though I hope they might bring you closer, it would seem that the twin grimoires I bestowed upon you were a wasted gesture. There may well be truth in your judgment of Alizé and me, but such a one-sided tirade bemoaning the evils of man rings false coming from the lips of Archon Louisois. Tell me, do you champion the cause of dragons because Bahamut compels you as his thrall? Or is it because you yourself have transcended the limits of man's existence? Ah, so the possibility did not escape your notice. What I prayed for, and what I have become. These are the keys that unlock the truth behind Eorzea's rebirth. If you would have them, then you must needs take them by force. Come! Rend this divine form asunder, and claim your answers. But 
But I thought... No. He has become a primal? It is difficult, I know, but you must accept it. That entity is no phantom or imposter. It is our beloved grandsire. You must defeat our grandfather. Grandfather is truly gone this time, but better it end this way than the alternative. I am yet here, Alice, my dear, sweet granddaughter. Grandfather? I must thank you, warrior of light. Without your valor, I might never have broken free of Bahamut's control. These last few moments are mine, to live as the man I once was. This is all that I wanted, yet now that it is happening, I find myself struggling to believe it. Is it really you? Grandfather, pray forgive me my insolence. It was not my intent to demean you. Forgive you? <laughs> I am proud of you, child. You were wise enough to deduce the manner of creature I had become. Alfino, Alize, if any here should beg forgiveness, it is I. Grandfather, I must ask. Will you not tell us what befell during the Calamity? Yes, yes, of course. You have come far to hear the truth. Let us then begin the tale at the Battle of Cartano where clashed the forces of the Garlean Empire and the Eorzean Alliance. T'was there in the sky above the surging armies that the elder primal Bahamut broke free of the Red Moon Dalamut. In an effort to contain this avatar of destruction, I called upon the Twelve to aid me in the creation of a prison of ether. But Bahamut would not be caged by such feeble bars. Too vast was his might, too fierce his rage. Little choice remained to me. I use the last of my strength to entrust our hope unto the future, and prepare to meet my end.
As you have no doubt surmised, I did not perish. When the cage built from the essences of the Twelve was destroyed, the sky was filled with a colossal cloud of ether. This drifting energy responded to the prayers of those fighting below, and to my own desperate wish that the dying realm be saved by infusing me with the power of a primal. I became the immortal phoenix, ancient symbol of rebirth. Rising into the sky, I struck Bahamut with all my newfound strength. The blow shattered his earthly form, and a shower of ether rained down upon the land. Thus began the rejuvenation of Eorzea. Believing the deed done, I relinquished my hold on that staggering energy, desirous that it should be returned to the realm without delay. But I had not reckoned on Bahamut's tenacious will, even as he teetered upon the cusp of oblivion. The dragon reached out to claim me. Alas, within my vast fading form, enough remained of the phoenix's energy to offer Bahamut a hold, and he dragged me along in his wake. And thus began your existence as the Elder Primal's thrall. I cannot help but wonder at his will to survive, Though he was all but obliterated, Bahamut found a way to seize the power you surrendered. That would explain why part of his physical form survived to be entombed underground. It would also explain why Eorzea was so terribly warped. Even as the land sought to restore itself, the returning flow of ether was cut off. Ah, very good. When his grip on existence was once again secured, Bahamut did not cease his feast until he had consumed every last mote of ether that yet floated in the air. And still he was not fully restored. You must remember that by this time, much of the freed ether had already returned to the land. That which remained was not sufficient to reconstruct so massive a form in its entirety. But there did not need to be, not for a being sustained by the marvels of Alagon technology. As long as some piece of Bahamut persists, the coils will seek it out and continue their regenerative task. The fragments of Dalamud appear motionless from the surface, but deep beneath the ground they had been searching, tunneling through rock and soil towards their escaped prisoner. And, as you have observed for yourselves, they found his heart. Warrior of Light, heed me. You must put a stop to Bahamut's regeneration. Whether it be for man or for dragonkind, the question of justice is irrelevant. The Elder Primal will leave naught but a smoldering wasteland for both his children and ours. I beg you to defend Eorzea and guide its people to the future they yet struggle to find. This portal will take you to the final internment, Hulk. 
Tis time for the tale of Bahamut and his part in the calamity to come to an end. Alvino, Alize, pray come closer. Your hopes and dreams must no longer be an extension of mine. You must needs find your own reason to fight for this realm, your own meaning in this sea of chaos. Will you do that for me? Of course, Grandfather. I have already made it my mission to see this newborn Eorzea survive and flourish. Alize, while I was yet enthralled to Bahamut, you spoke of my faith in man's strength. Know that your words reached me, imprisoned though my soul still was. So forceful was your conviction. I wonder if that belief has not become your own. Perhaps, after all your anger and sorrow was spent, you found something greater within you. See this fight to its culmination. Tis also your strength, in which I have faith. Thank you... for everything. Pray, take your rest, Grandfather. You deserve it. There are records of an art that allowed one to summon the power of a primal from the essence of its demise. And though I am no true primal, all that I have left, I give to you. Alvino, Alize, my darling grandchildren. May Light's blessings ever keep and protect you. Come, warrior of light. Our task remains undone. It was a long and arduous road, but at last we reach its end. Farewell, Bahamut. I banish you back to the ether. him capable! Uh, 
Alizé! Alizé! I had thought it finally over. We'll not survive another blast. No. Is this how I honor my promise to Grandfather? You must needs find your own reason to fight for this realm. Your own meaning in this sea of chaos. Will you do that for me? I will, Grandfather. In fact, I believe I already have. That reason has been with me all along, guiding me. Eorzea's blade of light, shearing through endless shrouds of darkness. I have been shown the miraculous feats of which we are all capable, of which I am capable. Bahamut, you have wreaked enough havoc. I will not let your wrathful fires consume all that we know and love. I have waited to hear you say that. You have found your resolve at last. Let me join my strength to yours. In this place, in this moment, our purpose has become one. Destroy Bahamut's crystal core. You did it!
But one task remains. With this last coil disabled, there shall be naught left to bind Bahamut to this world. His beloved children will finally know peace. Is done. He is truly gone. You knew, didn't you? You knew what Grandfather had become. I was not certain, but from all I had gleaned, it seemed a distinct possibility. The scene people describe of the Battle of Cartano was one of unimaginable devastation, and it is through the combined prayers of the desperate and an abundant source of ether that primals are born. I merely put two and two together. And you consider that a sufficient explanation? Well, however you stumbled across your theory, was this revelation that made you wary of my attachment to Grandfather. You feared that in my obsession I would fall under his primal sway. Is that why you decided to join us? To pull me back should I show signs of wavering? Pray forgive me, sister. I wished only to protect you. Yet I see now that I needn't have doubted the strength of your conviction. May I ask you a question? What do you now intend to do with the truth you have uncovered? Which particular truth was that, brother? The fact that desperate prayer gave rise to the primal phoenix? That this new god was responsible for setting Eorzea on the path to rebirth? Should such a tale become common knowledge, People would soon offer up their prayers in earnest. They would beseech Phoenix to complete the healing that was begun. Yet as you and I know all too well, the very act of calling forth this savior would do more harm to the land than good. We cannot encourage such worship for this very reason. Were Grandfather forced to return as an ether-draining primal, it would undo all that he had worked to protect. Your abiding love for him was the key that unlocked the truth of the Calamity. But keys may also serve to seal doors that were best left unopened. Let your love now guide your actions, and lock away deep inside the fate of both Grandfather and Bahamut.
Fear not, Alfino. I understand what must be done. The realm need not know the truth for it to be saved. That the Elder Primal is banished, to return no more, that is enough. Let us make our way back to the surface. Poor Oriange must be beside himself with worry.